Unit Accounts Unit Accounts are statistical accounts. They're similar to posting accounts and setup, but they contain non-financial or statistical data, and instead of currency, they track units. In Dynamics GP, unit accounts can be used to break down or allocate costs at a more granular level, which provides management a clear picture of how various areas of the company are performing. Why would you use unit accounts? Well, suppose your company would like to track revenue costs by headcount in a department in order to measure the efficiency and productivity of employees. A unit account could then be set up for the number of employees in each department and used in financial reports to calculate efficiencies. Let's take a look at the setup of such a unit account. To set up a unit account in Dynamics GP, go to Financial, Cards, Unit Account. Enter the account number that you are creating, a description, and an alias if required. It's best to enter all the series at the beginning as trying to enter them later is not as easy to do. Decimal points, in this case being a full-time employee, probably don't need any decimal points in your calculation, but you can enter in the number of decimal po points that are appropriate for the account that you're adding. I mentioned earlier that unit accounts by default act like balance sheet accounts. So during the year-end close process, the balance is brought forward to the new year. This could be an issue if you don't want to start the year with a balance. For instance, if you're tracking the number of units sold, you wouldn't want to have the balance flow into the new year of the previous year. So a new enhancement in Dynamics, uh, sorry, GP 2013, allows the user to mark if the unit account balance should be cleared at year end or not. So for versions prior to 2013, a SQL script would need to be run to clear this out. So nice to have. Budget information can also be added for unit accounts. This would allow a company to report on variances just like posting accounts. So a company can track headcount by department and not only report revenue by headcount, but also compare it to their budget. The history button can be used to enter historical year summary information for reporting to historical years. Once units are unit accounts are set up, they can be used for reporting in Management Reporter. In our example, the calculation revenue by headcount could be added to the income statement so it would show revenue per headcount for each department. Other examples of unit accounts would be number of units sold, number of calls received or resolved for a call center, number of attendees at a seminar, number of claims per month, or any data that's tracked and reported on that could potentially be used as a unit account. Adding balances to your unit accounts is as simple as doing a GL transaction. Just go to Financial, Transactions, and General. To add the number of employees to your account, you can click on Add New Employee. I can just spell and we'll put the account in here. We're going to add one new person and that might just be, we'll save that, post your batch and then when you go to your inquiry window you'll be able to see those new employees added to the added to that account. If an employee should leave and you wanted to reduce the number of employees in that account, you could do the exact same thing except for credit balance and reduce the number of employees in the account. That simple. And now your unit account is ready to use. So now that we've gone over unit accounts, let's talk about allocation accounts. So most companies want overhead expenses such as rent or utilities separated by department, location, project, or product. Frequently, the process for allocations is manual, with the calculation done in Excel and manually entered into the general ledger. This manual process may even be more efficient, inefficient if the allocation entry is not recorded at the same time as the expense. Within Microsoft Dynamics GP, this breakdown can be automated by using allocation accounts. So what is an allocation account? 
An allocation account within Dynamics GP is a special type of virtual GL account that will automatically distribute the posted dollar amount to other GL accounts according to your allocation method. Nothing actually gets posted to the allocation account. It only handles the distribution. Within Dynamics GP, there are two types of allocation accounts, fixed and variable. Fixed allocation is based on the fixed percentage that are predetermined at the time of setup. Fixed allocation accounts are used to distribute fixed percentages of a single transaction among several accounts. Variable allocation, on the other hand, is based on the balances in other accounts as opposed to fixed percentages. This feature is very helpful for month-end or year-end entries since it creates the allocation entries and you don't have to manually create them yourself. Let's see how this works. Suppose a company would like to divide utility expenses among the departments. When you post transactions to allocation accounts, the amounts are allocated to distribution accounts based on percentages you define. Allocation accounts don't appear on the financial statements, only the corresponding distribution accounts are shown. Once you've posted the transaction, the balances of the distribution accounts assigned to the allocation account reflect the changes you've made during transaction entry. So if we look at setting up our financial, our little allocation account, we'll start with the fixed one. Financial, cards, and fixed allocation. With our parent account of 000, we've added the different departmental accounts and appropriate percentage distributions for each account. If you wanted to change the distribution for any of those accounts, you could just simply click in the box and change the distribution. But you must remember that the distribution must always total 100%. You can't distribute anything more or less than that. You can determine the level of posting from the series to that particular account, will it be in detail or other, and you can also include where you can look up that particular account. Now that you have your fixed allocation account set up, let's look at the effect of that on the general ledger when something is posted to it. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to post through the GL. Most of the time, of course, these expenses would likely be posted through your accounts payable. So I'm going into financial transactions and general. And I started creating a journal entry for a $15,000 utility expense for the company. You'll notice that I've posted to the main account, not to one of the uh, departmental accounts, and the offset to accounts payable. Once that particular transaction is posted, and we can go to the journal inquiry, we'll see that accounts payable was affected and each of the distribution accounts has the appropriate dollar value posted to it rather than the main distribution entry. So that's the example for fixed allocation accounts. Now that we've talked about fixed allocation accounts, let's talk about variable allocation accounts. Variable allocation accounts can be used to distribute transactions based on additional factors that might change over time, such as the number of employees or the physical size of the departments on your business. These additional factors are tracked by breakdown accounts. Breakdown accounts can be posting accounts like sales and expenses, or they can be unit accounts like the square footage per department. When transactions are posted to a variable allocation account, the total is divided amongst its distribution accounts based on the percentages determined by the breakdown accounts. You don't need to enter these percentages because they're calculated based on the varying balance of each of the breakdown accounts. Each time you post a variable allocation account, the percentages might vary because the balance in the breakdown account has changed. For example, assume you need to distribute the rent expense for a building between several departments and use unit accounts to track the square footage used by each department. You can set up a variable allocation account and use the rent expense for each department as the distribution accounts and square footage unit accounts for the breakdown accounts. When you post an amount to the variable allocation account, the balance of the unit's accounts are used to determine the rent expense amount to post to each department. 
Variable allocation accounts don't appear on financial statements because they don't have balances. The amounts are posted to the variable or pardon me, the amounts are posted to the distribution accounts. The distribution accounts appear on financial statements if they're posting accounts. So let's look at that setup that I just talked about. It was a whole big mouthful. So we go to financial cards and variable allocation. So here is our main rent expense account. So that's the variable allocation account. Down at the bottom here, we've set up our distribution accounts. Again, this is the departments for that rent expense. And within those departments, you'll see a breakdown account. In this case, these breakdown accounts are unit accounts that are keeping track of the square footage per department. So when we, when we run a transaction through the variable allocation account, the distribution will be determined by the square footage in the breakdown account. And let me demonstrate that for you just so that it will make a little bit more sense. So let's look at the effect of posting an amount to that variable allocation account. In our example here, we show the main variable allocation account, the associated distribution accounts, the square footage for each of those distribution accounts, thus the percentage of total, which is simply the math between here divided by the square footage, and then the distribution value based on a $10,000 transaction. So now let's see what happens when we post that $10,000 transaction into the general ledger. So again, we'll go financial transactions general, and we'll post our transaction, our rent expense, through the general ledger. Again, something that's likely posted through accounts payable, but for demonstration, we'll post it directly through the general ledger. So we've entered in our rent expense. Again, we've entered in the main, as I'll call it, a parent account for rent, and we're offsetting to accounts payable. Once that entry is posted, we'll be able to go back to our inquiry window. So I'll go to inquiries. We'll go into our journal entry inquiry. We'll bring that up and we'll see the rent expense, a $10,000 credit to accounts payable, and then distributed as we saw in our spreadsheet based on the square footage to those different dis different distribution accounts. And that's a wrap. We have explored what unit accounts and allocation accounts are and why you'd use them. We've demonstrated the setup of the different accounts and the results when transactions are posted to these accounts.